We grow when we give. We grow when we give. We grow when we give. Nosotros crecemos cuando damos. We grow when we give. We grow when we give. Welcome to ROG, Return on Generosity. I'm your host, Shannon Cassidy. This podcast celebrates generosity at work, not financial giving. Giving valuable time, mutual respect, alternative perspectives, and genuine collaboration. Women's History Month is a celebration of women's contributions to history, culture, and society, and has been observed annually in the month of March in the United States since 1987. ROG is dedicating March to women's history and the essential role that women play worldwide. Our special guest today is Karen Bennett, Executive Vice President and Chief People Officer for Cox Communications. We have been personal friends and colleagues for over a dozen years. Something I admire about you, Karen, is your kindness, inclusivity, and composure. You've always got a warm smile, open heart, and have a very effective way of managing stress. Welcome to ROG, Karen. I'm thrilled to be here, and it's great to get to see you, Shannon. I'm glad I get to spend some time with you today. Ah, Likewise. This has been a bright light on my calendar since we scheduled this, so thank you for making time to share with us some of your thoughts. So give us a little bit of your background, Karen. Sure, sure. So, you know, I am um, one of these people that actually uh, live in the same city I was born in. So I am in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, an Atlanta native, as were my parents. But I went away about 60 miles up the road to the National Championship University of Georgia and um, did, did my college time there, both my my undergrad and my MBA, but then um, have always had roles in companies that might have been based out of Atlanta, but allowed me to travel the world. And so, you know, in that mm-hmm. regard, I've, I've truly had the best of all. Not only have I had an um, opportunity as a human resources professional to grow my career uh, primarily in the telecom and media space, but um, the good fortune of getting to do that while also staying close to my family and in my own backyard of Atlanta. So. I find the career journey has now afforded me the opportunity to be with Cox Communications the last six years in two of their different divisions as their chief people officer, again, based in Atlanta, but um, getting to learn the business by traveling the world to understand what we do to serve others. Oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And you and I had the chance to meet back in the Turner days. So that's, you know, and I looked that up, Karen, that was in 2008. So it's been quite a long time and you're just a bright light and today i know you all can't see her but she's wearing a sweater that says feeling good which is so so on point with karen bennett and the the bright light you are in the world so let's talk about generosity at work this is something that you model so well and i thought i was really looking forward to hearing your thoughts what are some ways that you see generosity in the workplace yeah um, you know, I have to say, having uh, just come through the celebration of MLK, one of the um, the biggest quotes that I saw out there on all social media was the most important question we can help ask ourselves is what are we doing to help or support others, right? And that just really stood out to me as I contemplate what generosity really means, because that's at its core um, what generosity is. It's how you have willingness and desire to help others. And help is in the, frankly, in the eye of the beholder, right? I mean, um, generosity is the, I think, the willingness to make yourself available, whatever that looks like to what the recipient needs. So for me, generosity in the workplace honestly starts with time. It is the one finite thing that we have that when we give it, and we give it being fully present, we are truly giving it away, right? And we're doing that in the spirit of, I hope this helps you. I hope this gives you insights. I hope this gives you an aha moment, or I hope it just has you realize you're being seen, that you matter, that you're heard. So time is the way I think it's the currency that we associate with generosity and how we show up in our workplace every day. And I say show up right now, that's a little more on the remote side of things than in person, uh, which honestly becomes even a harder premium right now, because what we're saying is we're willing to dedicate more screen time to one another, which in itself has a little bit of a burnout factor if we're not careful, but we realize it's important to do. So 
I think to answer your question, a couple of ways that I see um, time as the generosity currency show up. And it is one, when I do make time for others, as simple as it sounds, I show up on time and I try to clear my head, turn off the calendar, any other things that will be going on so that the time is time well spent and generously given versus split, split across another attention span or I'm trying to multitask something else. And it's it's time with purpose. So sometimes uh, that generosity is truly being the sounding board that someone has asked for. Sometimes it really is just catching up. Um, it, it fills our emotional buckets. It builds our relationships. It creates connectivity in a world where right now we can feel a little disconnected, at least in a physical sense. And I think it also sometimes is feeling the response when someone asks, tell me what I can do different or better. Give me feedback. Be my board of directors. Be my critic. All of that, because again, when you're willing to give your time, that's coming from a generous place. That is in hopes that you can use this to be better, to do better, or to appreciate yourself more. Sometimes it's not about what we can improve, but like understand and own the power of your own strengths. Oh, thank you for that. And I love how you're saying make yourself available. And I've heard it said that how do you spell love? T-I-M-E. So when you're saying time, that investment of time, and to not multitask people, to but to really be present and focused. And then you talked about time with purpose, that you're intentional about how you're investing that time. So what are some things that you do that help you to to do exactly what you just said? Well, honestly, uh, one of the things that sounds so simple maybe, but it, it puts me in the right mindset is, you know, when I do have things on the calendar, and we all do, and they often run back to back to back to back, but I've made it a point of understanding what that meeting is going into it, right? So I can get myself in that frame of, I want to use your time and my time the best way you want it used that day. So if it is just to, you know, borrow from the prior conversation, if it is, this is just a catch up, then you know what? I am just freewheeling and in the moment of tell me what you're up to. What have you been doing since we last spoke? If this is, I'd like feedback on dot, 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 then you know what? I'm going to have myself prepared to come ready to use that time with the specific examples of feedback I can offer you around whatever your inquiry was about. So that's one way I do it, to keep myself kind of um, organized and immediately present to the conversation at hand. Yeah, what a practical way that all of us can invest the time if we're willing to give it, to meet with those who are asking to meet and and requesting, in fact, requiring that they come prepared with a topic of discussion so you know what the direction it's going to take, and then you know how to invest the time that you have together. That That is, a, you, like you say, it's simple, but it's something that I think is very often lacking in, in meetings. So what are some ways that you've experienced generosity in your career, Karen? Um, so many different ways. And, and maybe that's how I've kind of learned how to model my a lot of my own generosity, if you will. You know, from a very early working age, I mean, when I first got my um, first paying jobs as a teenager, you know, what I realized is that the people around you, if you show interest in the work that you are learning to do, it becomes a flywheel. It's a self-fulfilling thing, right? That then people want to show you how to do more. Oh, you liked doing that? Well, watch, you could come and learn to do this. And and I was that person. I kind of like sponging up. I was truly interested in work and the independence of, I was like earning my own play money or fun money or what have you. I would learn and learn quickly uh, some of the more rudimentary tasks and would, and ask for more and then ask for more. And, and not in an impatient way, but I think in a, if you'll teach me, I will try to do this really well sort of way. And so I've experienced it um, that, by the way, we I'm a continuous learner. That has never stopped. It may be different things of different magnitudes that I'm learning um, as I move roles or companies or promote or what have you. But that to me was foundational and it has always stuck with me. And as a result, I think it's one of the things that I have as a leader of people or as a mentor to others, kind of put in the forefront about what do you want to learn and how do we help you do that? Sometimes it's, you know, functional skills in your profession. Other times it's 
um, subtleties around how to be a strong leader or an empathetic leader, whatever those are. But whatever you want to learn, it's what it, it was one of the things that stuck with me the most that I have the most gratitude around that then I kind of project onto others when I work with them. Yes. Right. I think it's part of being human that we have to grow and evolve. So you're saying like, how do you want to grow? You know, what are the things that you're curious to know and how can I be helpful to you? What can I give you access to or exposure to? And that people in your career had done that for you as well. Some unsolicited even, right? Some people just recognize that you showed curiosity toward it, or perhaps they recognized your talent in a certain area and wanted to invite you in. So what are some of the things that you would recommend that leaders do when they recognize that potential and they want to support and shepherd that learning process and growth for others? So I need to credit this to a leader that I had um, probably about five years ago who used this expression, and it has always stuck with me. And while it was uniquely her own, um, I've tried to tried to model it when I talk with others. And and she would say to someone, you know, as, as in, a, in a very caring and very authentic way, if I saw something in you that I felt like was holding you back, would you want me to share that with you? And I and I watched this happen as the kind of third person in the room. And then it also happened with me directly in a conversation with her. And I thought, wow, you know, what a, um, I'm leading with care, I'm leading with concern, I'm leading with your best interest in mind. And I'm prepared to be told, no, thank you, (laughs) right? (laughs) I mean, it's a question, you know, would you want me to share that with you? And I just thought that it not only empowers the person about to hear something that sometimes can be hard to hear, but it also makes the responsibility for the words become the recipients. I just share that because it has always left an impression with me and it was personally extremely valuable for me for that leader to have done that. When we come back, Karen will share her thoughts on the return on generosity. Hello, I'm Joe Panfield, President and CEO of the T. Howard Foundation. We fulfill our mission to increase diversity in the media industry by offering college students paid internships with major media companies. As a result of their internship experience, nearly 200 of our interns are hired every year in communications, marketing, and even on-air talent. For more information about our program, visit t-howard.org. And we're back with more from Karen Bennett, Executive Vice President and Chief People Officer for Cox Communications. So Karen, what are some of the ways that you see the return on generosity? We don't give to get, but the fact is there's so much reward for being a generous leader and person. So what are some of the ways that you've identified our returns? I think first and foremost is the brand it creates around who you are as, and not just as a professional or as a leader or a member of your community, but just as a human being, right? Uh, your the importance that you place on connections with others and giving of your time or your talents, they create your brand. And again, this is a, this is a circular reference. So this just you know, what you do just continues on and morphs. And and I mean that in the positive sense or maybe even in a negative sense. You know, if we are um, noncommittal with our time or frankly, that's being noncommittal of other people's time, meaning we don't value it as much as our own or look to have those really valuable moments with each other, that says something about your brand as well, right? So it's, it's how you use um, your time and others, because you are either taking or wasting or investing someone else's time. Let's be clear. It's it's no zero sum game there. I mean, it's, you're doing something with it. So I think most immediately is what it does to create your brand. I feel like it is a show of respect that 
I value someone's time by being there when they ask me to be there. Now, come on, life throws us curves. There's um, particularly in the days of back-to-back video conferences that many of us find ourselves in, you know, one call ends and you've got, you know, got to get on the other call and you're 30 seconds late and so be it. I mean, you've got to give each other grace, but um, you're able to give each other grace when you know it is not the typical way that you show up, that you show up on time. And so um, people are willing to afford you the grace when they realize, well, so, something must happen there. She's a minute later, or two minutes later, what have you. So for me, it's always been about um, respect, right? And um, dare I say that I feel like someone might feel disrespected if I uh, you know, don't show up in the right way and on time. So that, that's, you know, again, that's because it's important to me. I, I don't mean to put that on others, but I'd be disingenuous if I didn't say. And so sometimes when I feel like someone is late to join me on something, is that a display of the priority that meeting had um, or the uh, the respect to the topic that was going to be covered? Or is it simply genuinely that their internet went out? You know, I mean, that's where the grace has to come in. But that's how I kind of see it. It's a, it's a respect factor. Agreed. And something that we can all practice doing more intentionally and not always requiring others give us grace, but to be more planful and thoughtful to be on time. Because when you were talking about how we are either investing, wasting, or using time, you know, we, we want to be on the investment side. We want to be on the contribution side of things as a generous leader. So that, that's a really good one, the brand, the brand of being a generous leader. And like you said, you don't do it intentionally, but it's a nice outcome from being so intentional about how you affect other people. And that if you've been doing right by people and you have prioritized making a contribution to others, like it's going to work itself out, right? It's, it's going to come back around. Because you've made such a deliberate contribution in the careers and lives of other people, you know, how does it feel when you see those people accelerating in their career or having new opportunities or really um, taking it to another level for what they thought might have been possible because of your mentoring or your leadership? I mean, what does that feel like for you, Karen? You know, well, um, excited for them and, and proud to, to know them, right? I mean, truly really proud to know them. And, you know, come on, it was their skills and their tenacity that got them where they are. I, I like to think that in my spirit of candor and, um, and asking the question, if I knew something that might be holding you back or that you're holding back too much that you could be more effective, would you want to hear it? That that, that, that moment mattered, right? But what I know is that I'm probably one of many people that were, um, uh, on their board of directors along the way in their career. And so I'm just honored to have been one of them because at the end of the day, it really has been their hard work, their efforts, the brand they created for themselves through their successes that got them to where they are. But, you know, there's not a day um, that or a week that goes by that I don't see something on LinkedIn that's someone that I've worked with along the way. And I'm like, look at them. Good for them. Um, and so, yeah, and it, it does take me back for many of them a point in time. I can remember when we talked about X or I remember when they did Y. And, um, you know, hey, it's nice to think that you had a thimble full of something that might have made a difference to somebody. That That is more satisfying than I can put into words. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, that brings up another element of generosity, which is the celebration of other people's successes and and feeling the pride of, of being associated that with that even in, on any level. But I th- what I've noticed, too, and why I am aware of some of the impacts that you've made is that you are celebrating on LinkedIn and otherwise, but the successes of other people. So I think for us listening to think about how can we really celebrate with and amplify the successes and the advancements of others and, you know, feel that inner inner pride when we know that we've played a little part in that, but also just the the recognition of others' successes is such an important part of being a generous leader. So as you know, March is Women's History Month and the National Women's History Alliance designates a theme for every annual Women's History Month. So the 2022 theme is Women Providing Healing, Promoting Hope. 
And this theme is both a tribute to the ceaseless work of caregivers and frontline workers during the ongoing pandemic, and it's also a recognition of the thousands of ways that women of all cultures have provided healing and hope throughout our history. I'm curious to get your thoughts, Karen, on women providing healing, promoting hope. You know, and how uh, apropos a theme this year, just given what the last few years have thrown at us um, across the globe as it relates to pandemics and the, the ways in which our lives have altered, right? So I think of this, um, it's not uniquely women, but let's celebrate women. That's what Women's History Month is for around providing healing and hope. And I think it's taken a couple of different ways, at least that I, um, I listen to that, that theme in a couple of different ways. The, the responsibilities that may have traditionally fallen to women have really become amplified in these last couple of years. And I mean, women in a family construct from the standpoint of what happens when schools shut down, your offices close, um, your home, which was great for just home, but now it's having to become the schoolhouse and your work office and a conference room and the place that you cook and you sleep and you da 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 da. And suddenly, a lot of that has been put on women in the household to try to maneuver and navigate. Now, that, that's not to say the whole household doesn't lean in. It's a big challenge for everyone to figure out how are we going to coexist in this bubble for an uncertain amount of time, which really kind of sums up all of 2020 and all of 2021. And I'd like to think that we will bust out of that in 2022. But part of that is so providing hope, right? and providing healing and hope and healing i just beautiful words in and of themselves but the idea of having your think of the, the role of you are now a teacher you are now still an employee a leader of others you're a partner to someone else in your household you still parent you may have elderly parents for whom you have a care or responsibility needs and all of that you find that you are having to provide hope we will get through this i know it's different i know it's challenging but it's going to be okay even when you, you yourself don't necessarily have the data points to know that but you want to believe that that's what hope is but then healing, healing is the kind of incremental things we can do to make it more comfortable until we can recognize what is our new normal, our next normal. Um, there's no such thing as going back to normal, but the new can be even better. The next can be the best. And I think that that kind of uh, broad shoulders and perhaps the, the, um, as they say, women are more genetically wired to be both mind and heart is really what I think the idea of providing healing and promoting hope really comes from. Oh, so beautiful, Karen. Thank you for sharing that. And something for all of us to think about as we're celebrating Women's History Month and how we're honoring those who have come before us, the leaders that we coexist with now, and the leaders that we're helping create for the future. So all of our guests share a favorite quote or mantra, life motto. What's yours, Karen? Ah, um, it's short and sweet, but um, mine is that we plan, God laughs. So, you know, I, I share all of this with a little tongue in cheek, but you know, I'm a planful person. I uh, I think it has served me well. And I also recognize I am not in control. And whatever that means to any one of us, our universe, our spirit animal, whatever that is, the point is we do not get to control everything that comes our way. We simply don't. And um, the sooner in our lives, I would say that we recognize that, I think the more at peace and the more resilient we can be to the things that come our way unexpectedly. And it took me half a lifetime to probably really accept that. I felt if I just worked harder, I was more read in, I was more on top of it, whatever you know expression you wanna use, that um, it would give me a sense of having more control over the things around me. And it simply doesn't work that way. And so I say it with a smile in my voice to say, it's okay. We're not supposed to have control over everything, but I think for whatever reason, sometimes some of us think we sh we're supposed to. 
So release that, and I think you've become a healthier mind space. Yes. Oh, thank you. I know that there's many of us who needed to hear that today, Karen. So thank you for that encouragement to recognize that, yes, we do need to be planful and take responsibility. And what you've shared today is how do we leverage our time? How do we invest our time for others and ourselves? And then to know that we're not in control of everything. So to release that pressure that we might feel to have everything so buttoned up and say, you know, we're doing the best that we can. Let's let's continue to make a contribution and, and give ourselves and others a break. There you have it. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, thank you for investing your precious time with us today, Karen, and for being a dear friend and a light in the world. I'm so grateful for you. Well, Shannon, I'm grateful for you too. Thank you. Our OG takeaway tip, how to apply what we've learned to our own work and lives. Karen shared so many valuable insights and perspectives. Here are three key takeaways. Number one, be on time. Two, offer to provide feedback. And three, celebrate the successes of others. Number one, time, the most essential component of generous leadership. On a Brene Brown podcast interview with Dr. Edith Eager, I heard, how do you spell love? T-I-M-E. Karen shared, you're either taking, wasting, or investing someone else's time. It's not a zero-sum game. How true. How do we take or waste other people's time? When we're late, unprepared, disengaged, disruptive, or let our ego run the show? How intentional are you about how you consume or create energy in the company of others? Do you even think about how you're going to invest the time? How would you know? Well, do you send agendas to clarify the goals of a meeting? Do you give yourself a few seconds or minutes in between meetings to make sure that you're able to log into the next one? If you're committed to follow-up, how quickly do you complete it? These are all ways in which we could truly invest and honor other people's time. Number two, feedback. What's your approach to giving and receiving feedback? Do you give it only when asked? If you are asked, how well do you prepare to provide feedback? Do you have specific examples of the situation that you're offering feedback about, the behavior, specifically what the person said or did, and the impact? How did that behavior make you or others feel? Try starting off with Karen's approach. Think of someone at work who you could say this to. If I knew something that might be holding you back, that could make you more effective, would you want to hear it? And if they would want to hear it, prepare something meaningful. In order to make our work environments more feedback rich, we need to keep those doors open and thoughtfully walk through them so we can be of service. Let's ask ourselves, what are we doing to help support others? Number three, Celebrate the successes of others. In the book Mindset by Carol Dweck, she distinguishes between fixed mindset and growth mindset. One of the many differences is how we respond to other people's successes. The fixed mindset sees another person's success as a threat. We feel jealous or we judge the person as being lucky or favored. The person with the growth mindset feels inspired by the successes of others. Think of a recent post that you saw on LinkedIn about a colleague who has advanced perhaps further than you in the same field. Someone who won an award or was on a panel or published a book. To practice growth mindset, celebrate them. Use the clappy hands and some exclamation marks. With growth mindset, there's a celebration, wonder, and a genuine happiness for the person who has achieved recognition, promotion, or reward. Let's strengthen our growth mindset and truly honor the successes of others. This week, take T-I-M-E more seriously by being prepared, focused, and invested in others. Offer an invitation to provide feedback to someone and wholeheartedly celebrate the successes of others. We continue our Women's History Celebration next week with Debbie Epstein-Harris. Until then... Stay generous, everyone.
Thanks for listening to ROG, Return on Generosity podcast. Please help us grow by subscribing and reviewing us on your favorite podcast player. And for more information, visit bridgebetween.com. We grow when we give. We grow when we give. We grow when we give.